Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at the Virginia project. This time we're going to be looking at the role of Sir Walter Raleigh and his planning for the expedition. Who was Sir Walter Raleigh? Walter Raleigh was a member of the gentry who became an explorer and a favourite courtier to Elizabeth I. He was also a writer and historian and is known for his role in popularising tobacco smoking in England, probably not one of his more proud legacies in hindsight. In 1584, Elizabeth gave him a grant to organise the colonisation of a region of North America, Virginia. Note also that he was to organise it, not risk his life going there. She specifically forbade that. This was difficult because two previous attempts by Sir Humphrey Gilbert had been dismal failures, so few wanted to risk money on such an adventure. However, Raleigh was able to investigate, organise and secure funds for the colony promote the voyage and get people to agree to go and settle the colony, appoint the Queen's governor of the colony who would then lead it, and also demonstrate how similar colonies might be established in the future. In 1584, Raleigh sent out a fact-finding mission to Virginia to prepare for the main colonising expedition that would follow. The explorers brought back some good news. Native, indigenous Americans were friendly and prepared to swap food for European metals and tools, although it should be said that swapping food in their culture we now understand is a form of submission by the English, which would cause a few problems later on. Food could also be grown out there, in the fertile ground. It could also be hunted and foraged. Virginia was therefore like a paradise. This was completely different to some of the wild rumours in England that the land was filled with monsters and savage people. To add to this, two indigenous people actually did come back to England. Manteo and Wanchese came to England and taught mathematician Thomas Harriot their Algonquian language. An English Algonquian dictionary followed. They helped the colonists to make contact with their people. Encouraged by the 1584 expedition, Raleigh set about raising the money he had need. The project required enormous sums of money. He intended to raise them in the following ways. Trade. Native people had proved willing to trade things for simple English goods like wool and cloth. This would expand the cloth market. In return, exotic goods like tobacco could be brought back and sold in England. This would help, but it wouldn't be enough. More was needed. Royal patronage was another way. The war with Spain meant that Elizabeth was not prepared to risk much money. However, she did suggest that the colony be named Virginia after the Virgin Queen, and she gave one ship, a supply of gunpowder, and £400 for the project. More important than the money, royal approval also encouraged the next thing, private investment. Wealthy people, notably Sir Francis Walsingham, backed the project. They hoped trade and raiding Spanish ships would make them a profit in the end, as it had for Drake. Raleigh invested his own money too. By 1585, Raleigh had what he needed. It wasn't just money on Sir Walter Raleigh's mind. He needed to think of some other things too. There'll be quite a lot of information on this bit, so you might want to play it full screen. Firstly, he had to decide who to take. He'd need around about 300 colonists, which would all need a mix of skills and the right mix. He'd need some landowners and some craftsmen, and they would have to make and repair all that might be needed there. He'd need hunters and their dogs and fishermen, most of those from Devon. They would need to help supply the food. They'd need priests and clergy, not only for the spiritual well-being of the colonists, but also to try and convert some of the indigenous people. Soldiers would be needed for protection, and enough farmers to support all of the colonists above and themselves. He'd need to consider the timing. When were they going to set off? The colonists had to sail early enough to arrive in time to plant their crops, but late enough to avoid the worst of the weather in winter. He had to leave enough time to allow those crops to grow for the winter, and leave enough time to assemble colonists with the right mix of skills. Supplies were also needed, food for the voyage, and food to eat until the crops grew. Fresh, safe drinking water, tools and raw materials like iron for the craftsmen, farming supplies, seeds, tools, etc. Salt to preserve food, and weapons both for the soldiers and for the ships to defend themselves from attack. And what about those ships? These needed to be big enough to carry all the colonists and all the supplies and make the journey. They needed to be well armed too to fend off the Spanish and pirate attacks. But that wasn't all, a few miscellaneous items. Colonists would need to, uh, need to be aware that they would be close to the bases in the Caribbean and Florida which were held by the Spanish, so attacks were pretty likely. The animals would need to be taken on board and those that couldn't be brought initially would need to be bought in the Caribbean on the way. 
They would also need to build a fort for security on arrival. They'd need enough seeds for a variety of crops to grow, and they'd need to make contact with indigenous people. Manteo and Wanchese could help with this. They'd need enough money to trade, and they'd need a leader and governor. Raleigh was not allowed to go, so he'd need to appoint someone suitable. Finding a leader was not all that straightforward. The Virginia project actually only attracted about 107 colonists in the end, not the 300 that had been hoped for. Only adventurous, confident and risk-taking people had signed up, and such people would need very careful management. Raleigh was not allowed to lead it. He was needed in case of Spanish invasion, and Elizabeth dared not lose one of her favourites. Three men were chosen, each with a different role. Firstly, we've got Sir Richard Grenville. He was the expedition commander. Grenville seemed suitable as he was an experienced sailor and soldier. However, he relied on fear for authority. He had a hot temper and he did not get on well with Ralph Lane. Speaking of which, Ralph Lane was appointed the governor of Virginia. Lane was a fort builder with experience in battle and experience exploring. He had a positive outlook, enjoyed a challenge and was a good survivor in nature, so probably quite suitable. And then we've got Thomas Harriot, who we've already mentioned. He was the translator and cartographer or map maker. Harriot learned Algonquian and had a great bond with the native people. He was a good navigator and map maker, and it was hoped he would probably build a few metaphorical bridges once he got to the New World too. Ready or not, on April the 9th, 1585, the Virginia expedition set sail. They had five ships, Tiger, which was the largest, Roebuck, Lion, Dorothy and Elizabeth. Tiger was the largest, carrying fresh supplies, meats, beer, wine, seeds and grain to be made into bread. The English landed on Roanoke Island in late 1585. This was far too late to plant the crops and seed them for the winter, so they've already hit upon a problem. Had Raleigh's preparations failed after all? Well, we'll explore this in more detail in the subsequent video, so now we'll sum up. In summary then, Sir Walter Raleigh was an explorer and favourite courtier to Elizabeth I, who was tasked with organising the colonisation of part of North America. He promoted the project to try and attract colonists and raise funds for the colonisation. There was an exploratory expedition in 1584, which showed the indigenous people were friendly and helpful. 107 colonists, led by Sir Richard Grenville, backed by Governor Ralph Lane and translator and mapmaker Thomas Harriot, were assembled. The expedition left in April 1585, arriving on Roanoke Island at the end of the year, but too late to plant their crops. It was already going to be a challenge for the colonists to survive, and in the next video we'll find out just how much of a challenge. But for now, that's the end of this one. Thanks for watching, and if it's been helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.